This is ITV News with Nina Hussain. Good afternoon. The Prime Minister has set himself a five-year target to stop one of Britain's biggest problems, homegrown terrorism. In a direct appeal to young British Muslims who might be tempted to support the so-called Islamic State, he gave a warning. He said we have to face a tragic truth that some people who were born and raised here have little to do with people from other religions and backgrounds and that can lead them to become radicalised. But will this tough talk help or could it alienate some British Muslims even more. Our political correspondent Lewis Vaughan Jones reports. Lewis, they've been trying to tackle it for years. What's different this time? Search teams are still working to find three people unaccounted for after an explosion at a mill in Cheshire. Yesterday they recovered one body from the wreckage in Bosley, but that victim hasn't yet been identified. A relative of one of those missing has told ITV News of his frustration at the company's response. Damon Green is in Bosley. Damon, what have you learnt? A man's been remanded in custody at Crawley Magistrates Court after being charged with the murder of a great-grandfather. 34-year-old Matthew Daly allegedly stabbed him after a car crash. Still to come. But first, doctors in England have spent the weekend posting pictures of themselves at work online in protest at the health secretary's plans to change their hours. Through your weekend and how much you had to work posted a picture of yourself working with some of your colleagues, those that have the argument that because some consultants, as you say, not all, do opt out of working at weekends, while the likes of nurses and paramedics can't opt out, that it should be the same for all health professionals within the NHS. If he had the money to do that and, as you say, provide the extra uh, services around the consultant's work, would there be enough staff? Have we got enough people in Britain, bodies, consultants, porters, nurses, to actually do those jobs? At least 27 people have been killed and more than 100 injured in an explosion in Turkey near the border with Syria. Professor Stephen Hawking is lending his name to a multi-million pound quest to find life on other planets. The project is being funded by a Russian billionaire. Our science correspondent, Alok Jha, is at a launch in central London. What makes them think they can find Sorry, something, I'm, Alok? I'm basically listening to you. Professor Stephen Hawking there and thank you to Alok Jha. A mother has described her horror as she watched her surfer son being attacked by a shark on live television. Mick Fanning was taking part in the final of a competition in South Africa when the shark swam up behind him. But as Salih Bidolf reports, he managed to fight it off. An amateur golfer will hope to complete an unlikely victory in the final round of the Open Championship today. Irishman Paul Dunn was the overnight leader going into the final day, which is being played on a Monday because of bad weather. Our Scotland correspondent Debbie Edward is at St Andrews. It's a final day no one expected. What do you expect from Paul Dunn? How good is he? Can he really win it? Finally, this lunchtime, the secret network of underground tunnels that's being opened up to public view. Burrowed deep into the white cliffs of Dover, the labyrinth supported gun batteries that were Britain's front line against the Nazis. They remained forgotten for years, but the National Trust has now restored them, giving us an unusual glimpse at wartime life. Duncan Golestani had a look inside. Duncan Golestani reporting from the Fan Bay Deep Shelter in Dover. A reminder of our main stories this lunchtime. That's it this lunchtime. Mary Nightingale and Alistair Stewart will be here with the ITV News at 6.30. From everyone here for now, bye-bye. Hello again. Now the main stories in London. An investigation has begun after a five-year-old girl died when a tree supporting a zip wire collapsed. Boris Johnson's Routemaster buses are not living up to their eco-credentials because most of their batteries aren't working, according to one of the candidates hoping to become London's next mayor. The Metropolitan Police is stepping up action against knife crime this week to coincide with new sentencing guidelines. 
A group of artists has created a bed outside a shop front in Shoreditch to protest against the use of so-called anti-homeless spikes. Time now to take a look at the weather forecast with Martin Stew. And that's all from us for now, but don't forget you can get updates throughout the day by going to our website at the usual address, itv.com London. I'll be back at six. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Bye-bye.